playing extremely hard. Tempo's been great. The, the strength staff really got them prepared this summer, I think better than they ever have before. Um, you know, we've stayed healthy, which is always nice. And then uh, we'll make sure we put together some more good weeks and get ready to go for Montana. What are these first few days like, just seeing them out here getting running? Yeah, I, I joke with them all the time. With the acclimatization period, it's, it's kind of an ease into camp. You go your helmets days, and then we're finally in shells. Um, it, it's just good to see them line up and play football. The one thing that we've done a lot of so far in camp is good on good team drills, as well as focusing on the details and the individual. So it's really, you go from your individual blocks to just 11 on 11, let's play some football and see who can play, who can't, where we need to build more depth, and then the guys that are playing like we thought they would. What's different about these guys right now than when you took over in year one, just the team-wise, getting used to everything, getting used to the Ryan Beard way? Yeah, I think it's there's a level Level of comfort with year two that, that comes with just the similarities of this is how we do things this is our process and they believe in that process and I'm really proud of our coaching staff for bringing in the right guys I think we really did a good job in the transfer portal bringing in some some really talented guys but they're not just good players they're good people and they've really meshed well with our entire team what's it mean to have a guy like Jacob in camp like and he's healthy and he's just ready to roll and fingers crossed Whole season. Yeah, the whole offense feeds off Jacob, which is great. Um, and it helps to have a powerful running back like Jacardier back there. He's not just, again, like a great player, but he's become a vocal leader. He's matured. He, he does a really nice job making sure we're staying on task and, and keeping things upbeat and positive and, and finishing practice strong. Now, with Jacardier, you mentioned him. I remember hearing last year rumblings that maybe, you know, pro scouts have even talked to him. What kind of season can he have now that he's come back? Yeah, I think he's gonna, he's set for his best season yet. He looks really good. Again, I hope you guys get to talk to him. Um, his body just looks the part of an NFL back. I feel like last year he maybe played a little heavy, but his body comp has changed and he's really moving. And next time you guys come to practice, watch some of the big open field runs he makes and you'll be impressed. On Jacob, just what is that acclimation period like, just getting him used to it? I know you said a pitch count, just what's that look like trying to ramp him up for opening night? Yeah, we've been easing him into things, but you know, with Jacob it's hard because we, he wants to take every single rep. He wants to be in on, on every play, making every check, but it's been good. We started with about 40 to 50 throws. We're up to, you know, 60, 70, 80 now, which is great. And then, you know, we'll have our first big scrimmage next Saturday. I'm excited to see kind of how he moves in the pocket, his confidence level, and, and watch him spin it down the field. When it comes to underclassmen, is there anyone that's really sticking out to you? I like them all. I got to be honest. They're, you know, the one thing about the guys we recruited, we're, we will always be a grassroots recruiting here. We're always going to emphasize young high school players to make sure that they do a good job. Cam Williams is as explosive as they come. I mean, his movement, his his transition in and out of breaks at wide out, he catches the ball smoothly. He's a guy that I really, really like. Um, you know, just young guys in general. Jaden Bex has been explosive during camp. He's made some unbelievable runs, great vision. Uh, so he, he's doing a really good job. Another guy, J.J. O'Neal, yesterday had a bunch of pass breakups and interception. Uh, has, has really been competing hard this camp. You know, obviously there's, some, there's restrictions that you're now that you're changing conferences. How do you keep these guys motivated knowing that the postseason isn't something that you can dangle in front of them like you could before? Yeah, the postseason's fine, but you can still win a conference championship and the best conference in FCS. I don't think anyone would argue that, you know, winning the Missouri Valley Conference is just the national champion, in my opinion, is going to come from the Valley. So you win that conference and you compete in that conference. Um, I think you feel pretty good about your season moving forward. Was there any conversations with guys after that just kind of – Man, we don't know. It's just like we don't get that ultimate goal at the year of a championship, or that Missouri State's going to end its uh, um, FCS time without a playoff win since '89. Just what kind of conversations, maybe one on one with the team, did you have about that? Yeah, I think they were a little just more so unsure because different outlets were saying different things. And once we finally got to get together as a team and give them a, a vision of what the next six months looks like, they really settled in and put it in their mind what we wanted to accomplish as a team moving forward, and, and they've been great. You didn't have anybody leave, did you, no, after that? No, They're, They believe in what we're doing here. They believe in our staff. They believe in the players we brought in. And even, it's not just the players we brought in. When you look at our, me and you were talking the other day in my office, you look at our roster, these are guys that have been here for four or five years now. That's what I'm extremely proud of in the age of transfer portal, in and out, guys just leaving at the drop of a dime. We've done a good job retaining, which is important to us. With the pending move to FBS, is there any kind of different vibe in camp? Does it feel any different than it has in the past? I think anywhere, whether it's NAIA, FBS, Power 5, what it, camp is camp, which is, which is a good thing. I think once 
you know, we kind of pick our head up and breathe a little bit once students come to campus, once the media outlets really start rolling about gearing up for football. I think they'll they'll feel it a little bit more, but right now they're such, in such a grind, they don't really have time to think about much else. What about the doors it opens to future recruiting, having kind of FBS on the horizon? Yeah, anytime you can put your organization on a national level, that's where you want to be. You want to be with the guys on ESPN, ESPN Plus, Two, whatever that is, um, and, and playing nationally televised games. One thing when we were at Central Michigan, you know, a lot of people don't like midweek games. I love a midweek game. What else? What else are you doing on the couch middle of the week than watching, you know, Conference USA, watching the guys compete on national TV? I, I love those games. You know, it's not talked about a lot, but your special teams group. I mean, they're a talented bunch. You got Grant Burkett, who's on the watch list again this year. Uh, Owen last year weighing 100% extra points. How vital is that to this team? Yeah, it's crucial. I mean, that, that's one of the most important phases of the game in itself. And to have the guys, and just what we hit on earlier, is guys not going into the portal looking for money, guys enjoying their opportunity here, understanding that they're getting developed and they're getting put on a national stage. That's why the guys stay, because they believe in what we're doing at Missouri State, and they're set to have another All-American campaign for sure. We talked about the, the Lions being key to the outcome in the Valley. How do you feel like the offensive and defensive lines will hold up this year? Yeah, Art, I know it's early, but so far I feel like it's probably our, our strongest offensive and defensive line maybe we've had since we've been here. You know, it's, it's hard to compare it to the, to the first year's line with Eric Johnson, Kevin Ellis, those guys. Um, but I think we're surely up there. And I think as camp continues to go, we'll have guys take strides once we put the full pads on and really see if our offensive line can move the line of scrimmage, if our defensive line can get after the passer like we've been known for here. Um, and again, it's, it's all about stopping the run. And I think once you guys get some film of our scrimmage and get to come see us live, you'll see that there's some different body types in there. What are those strides for the offensive line? We saw some last year, and that's always been the big question. Or uh, Since Bobby took over, kind of leading into your uh, your time as head coach, just what, what, have you, what have you seen from that group to be able to be able to push some guys a little bit more? I think they've been just more consistent. I, you know, you said that sometimes they were good last year. If we can just put together a consistent effort and be good day in and day out, I think that's what's most important because when you look talk about offensive line play unfortunately you know when they're getting crushed that's the topic when they're doing a great job no one really talks about it you know so me and coach Alvin talk all the time if they're not talking about the O line that's a great thing because you're doing a good job you're, you're running efficiently you're protecting your quarterback and that'll be crucial for us moving forward is keeping Jacob off the ground as much as possible luckily we've talked about you know knowing when to slide knowing when to throw the ball away um, so I think we're much improved there. Coach, I want to ask you, you're at, here at such a unique time, not just the conference change, but I know they're changing, t tweaking the start times of the games, doing some little things to try to improve the fan experience, bring more students in here. What do you think of those changes and what would it mean to, to really fill this place up like that? Yeah, we want to make sure that everybody understands that you're going to have a great quality product on the field. You're going to have a great fan experience. And one of the things that I've been focused on with President Williams is the fact that, you know, we want our fans to be comfortable in our stadium. We want, you know, efficient, um, you know, ways to get food and water, efficient ways to, you know, use the restroom, get some shade. And I know those sound small, but those little details are what can separate a full house and half full. And I think we're making strides in that direction to, to make it better. It feels kind of weird, Ryan Beard, no beard. I mean, is this going to be all season or what? I actually had my camp beard going this morning and it was just gross, so I had to get rid of it. I'll start I'll start trimming it back up, get you a good beard going before the first game. <laughs> what's, what's, kind of the, what's kind of the injury report kind of early in camp? Just uh, the guys that might be out for a little bit. I know Jared Lloyd's on there. Yeah. Just anything else right now? So Jared Lloyd obviously is out for the season, unfortunately. Um, Sean Reese, one of our wideouts, uh, that we brought in uh, from Marshall. He's, he's got a little hip flexor issue going. We're gonna try to get him back within the next few weeks. Uh, that He's to be determined when he comes back. But other than that, we've, we've stayed healthy. Again, knock on wood, make sure that we continue to do a good job. And we've kind of changed schedules around a little bit just to where we can control mileage a little better than we have in the past. Uh, and I think that's, that's really helped us be efficient in practice. You, you brought up Cam at wide receiver and the wide receiver is going to get a lot of attention this year, just kind of how how many guys you brought in. You, I mean, we talked the other day, you didn't even mention Cam. And it's just like there's a lot of guys that um, you're trying to fill it, put into that group. Um, just 
how many deep do you want to go and just uh, just kind of rotations right now and who's kind of standing out? Yeah, we want to play as many guys that can help us. If you can help us win, you're going to touch the field. Um, and I think that's one thing that Coach Clowney, our new wide receivers coach, has done such a good job of is helping them understand that they're a, a unit that has to work together. There's going to be times where the starter might not take 60 reps in a game. But if you take 10, they need to be 10 high quality reps. And it's just, they're so deep right now. Even with the guys we have currently on the roster, you know, Hunter Woods back, J Rob's back, uh, Key is back. All those guys, Liam O'Reilly has had an unbelievable camp. He looks great. And then just to add James Blackstrain, you know, Antonio Robinson, Sean Reese, and you can just keep going on and on. And again, Dash Luke, the guy, all red Luke, I'm sorry. I always, when I see his name on the paper, it just, I asked uh, Max, our DFO, is all red, yeah, Dash. So we need to get his name officially changed to make that a little easier for all of us. So all red's what we should be writing? <laughs> dash, let's, let's try to get it changed to Dash. Get it to change yeah. to Dash, let's, okay. Let's go Dash Luke. I think that's, that's what we're shooting He's fast, for. right? He's extremely fast. He great. better be with yeah. that name. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, how key is it for you guys for this receiver group to get that chemistry that they didn't get all of last year with Jacob Clark being healthy? Yeah, it's crucial. I think the one thing you've seen as, as camp has progressed is their timing has been much better. The more reps that you can get as a group, the more reps you can get with the first offensive line, the first string quarterback, that's when you really get to know each other on an, on an athletic perspective uh, because obviously we missed those reps in the spring, but Jake has been working back in even in the summer, doing a nice job. And the nice thing, the one thing I feel best about the offense right now is they love each other and talk to each other and meet off the field even when the coach is on around. They go do extra film study. They go, you know, hang out together in the calf. It's, it's a really united front, which is great to see. What is it about this year's team that gives you so much confidence, right? Last year was your first year, and maybe not everything went y'all's way, but why this year on the outset do you feel like maybe that ball's going to bounce y'all's way this season? Hey, if you don't believe, no one else will. You know what I mean? We're going to keep pushing positivity and keep making sure that our guys understand how we get there. How we get there at Missouri State football is winning each and every day, finding that percent to get better, and, and keeping growing the team. Both, you know, we talk about it all the time about being your best self will be the best team we can be. And if we keep talking about it, keep pouring it into each other, we'll get there. Y'all finish out the season with the dominant Dakota. Mm -hmm. So are you going to use every single game pretty much to prepare against those teams? Uh, no, we got 10 before those. Yeah. You know, the, the, Dakota, the Dakotas are fine. They're a good football team, but we're going to try to prepare the best we can each and every game and take them one at a time. That's our approach. Take day to day the best we can. Um, yeah, of course, that's, you know, we, we talk, we jokingly talk about it. I guess it's not that funny how hard our schedule is, but no one cares. You know, no one's going to feel sorry for us. No one's going to say, oh, poor Missouri State Bears. You know, so we're going we're to get their best shot and they're going to get ours. You mentioned Liam. I, I wanted to ask you about this group of kids from the area going into their second year, this solid group of them. Talk about what you've seen from those guys. Yeah, we'll start on the defensive line side. Caden Weiss has been phenomenal. He's big, strong. I mean, just look at him over there in his, in his jersey. He's a, he's a big man. He's done a really nice job. And then on the other side of him, uh, Andrew Link has been phenomenal through camp, done a nice job. You know, the thing about Andrew is he just looks so much different in the weight room. Both of those guys, they've done a tremendous job in the offseason, getting strong strong, working their hands. Uh, mentioned JJ earlier. He's he's gonna, you know, the, the issue with JJ and I, we talk about it all the time is, or that group has never been that deep. And I told him, I said, make sure we have to play. You know, that's what we tell all these guys in the deep position rooms is, make a coach say, we will not win unless you're on the field. And JJ's starting to do that. Coach, a uh, big thing. For this group to not be able to be bowl eligible per se, right? Some, some could say that that would, maybe negate their want to win, but obviously you got you know every guy out here wants to win. So how do you guys kind of keep that message of, we're not playing for something, but you're playing for something? Yeah, we're absolutely playing for something. We're playing for a conference championship. If you're in the Missouri Valley, which again is the best valley in, in FCS, and we need to finish strong. We need to show the fans and show the community and show administration that we're heading in the right direction and that um, we can compete with anybody on the schedule and do the best we can. How much do you hate that storyline? <laughs> I, I would say we're going to be talking about it Often, <laughs> it just we we talked the other day. Just uh, 
not seeing uh, black strain too much in live periods yet. But now that you've seen him a couple times, you'll get pads on soon. Uh, just what's stood out about him and that person that you've recruited since uh, you were at Louisville. Yeah, it's so much fun watching him play. He, he's a joyful young man. He's finally getting a chance to get the reps he needs to get his game where he wants to take it. He can really stride and catch the football. He's a guy that can stretch the field vertically. And I think he's also got enough got enough frame to him to be able to block on the perimeter because you know she mentioned the Dakotas earlier they do a great job blocking on the perimeter perimeter blocking is, is a premium and I think that with some of the different body types we have in that room we'll be able to do that effectively that linebacker competition two open ones just trying to fill that up well just what are you seeing from the people that are trying to take those two open positions and Taj leading them yeah Taj has been great being the leader of that group with coach Dennison coach Dennison's done a phenomenal job making sure they're in the right position understand how to make calls he's been a huge addition to our staff uh, and then just going back to Taj he's moving communicating better than he ever has before it, and he has to you know he, he's in a place where we have to have him be that guy and some of the other guys just to keep an eye on Mike Teeson from CBC in St. Louis has done a nice job he's really developed Dallas Winter Johnson um, also from the St. Louis area has had a tremendous camp so far I'm ready to get some live reps. I want to see guys play football, see if we can get bodies on the ground, um, and then see who goes from there. Was there anything that you learned last year that you took into this year, maybe style, strategy, anything that you changed or molded? Yeah, I don't know if we have enough time on the recorder to talk about all the things I learned. Um, but the one difference, again, is everything has slowed down. We always talk about players seeing the game slower and things just changing for them. I think that's helped us as a staff evolve and set the foundation of who we are culturally, what we want to be known for. And um, the players have done a nice job buying into that, and it shows up on the field. Coach, you're bookending your campaign with the national champion and the, the runner-up. Uh, that's probably pretty unique to you, but at the same time, uh, the, the in-laws, how excited are, are they to come to Montana to come and watch you guys? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We actually took a trip out there a few years ago. I, just stellar beauty. I mean, God created a masterpiece out there, and it's it's going to be really fun for our guys to go play. I don't know who who all's been here to the game at Montana, but it's set right in the mountain front, just picturesque, and they had a damn good football team. We're, we need to be ready to go.